In this video, we're going to be continuing to talk about maximum likelihood estimators and how they work in practice by means of an example. So remember that the example which we were talking about in the last video was that we were considering the whole of the UK population. So we've got circa 70 million individuals in the UK population. And the idea is that in the UK population, there is some value of P, which gives the probability that a randomly chosen individual is actually male. And P here in the population is quite obviously just going to be the fraction of individuals which are male in the population. So that's it's going to be something which is quite close to a half. But the idea here is that we don't have the entirety of the population's data. We only have a sample from the population. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to come up with some sort of estimator, which I'm going to call p hat, which is our estimate or provides estimates of the population parameter p from using it on the sample. And we got as far as to talk about the likelihood function, which we found in this case to be the product from i equals 1 to n of p to the power xi times 1 minus p to the power 1 minus xi. Um, we spoke about how this likelihood here essentially represents the probability that we would have got that sample of individuals if we actually knew the parameter p in the population. But the idea is we don't know the parameter p and in general it's the thing we're trying to estimate. So what do we do? Well the idea is what we do is we differentiate this likelihood with respect to the parameter p and we set that equal to zero and that in turn will define our maximum likelihood estimator of p which I'm going to call p hat ml. But the problem with differentiating this function up here as we spoke about is that it is a product and products are difficult to differentiate. We would have to use the product rule and because we've got n parts of it that could be very very involved. So we've kind of come to a dead end, but all is not lost. And the way in which we can rectify things, as it turns out, is to take the log of the likelihood and actually look at a thing which we call log likelihood, which I'm writing here as little l. So if I take the log, this is gonna be the log of this whole function up here, which is just gonna be the log of pi from i equals one to n of p to the power xi times 1 minus p to the 1 minus xi. Okay, so what are we actually going to do from here? Well, it turns out that if I differentiate the log likelihood with respect to the parameter p and set that equal to zero, then that actually gives me the same estimator for p that we would have obtained if we just differentiated the likelihood rather than the log likelihood. And why is that? Well, it's to do with the monotonicity of the log transformation and the idea that log is always increasing in its argument. I'm not going to talk about that in detail now, I'm going to talk about it in another video, but just to say it's to do with the fact that log is always increasing. It's a very well behaved function and because of that, that's why we can use it and when we differentiate the log likelihood, it will give us the same estimators as we would have obtained otherwise. Okay, so why have I actually taken the log? What's the benefit to taking the log? Well, the benefit to taking the log is to remember our log rules. So the log of a product A times B is equal to, if you remember, log A plus log of B. So what we've done here is we have taken a product, AB, and when we take the log of it, it actually turns it into a sum. And this is going to hold when we have n things in our product. So what's going to happen here is this log of this whole thing is just going to convert to a sum. So we're going to be left with the sum from i equals 1 to n of log p to the power xi 1 minus p to the 1 minus xi. So our log transformation has converted something which was quite hard to differentiate, a product, into something which is really easy to differentiate because a sum is much easier to differentiate than a product. Okay, so let's go a little bit further here. Let's 
try and see if we can simplify this whole thing. Well, remember that if we have log a to the power, let's say, b, this is the same as b times log a. And we can use that in combination with this rule up here to write that the log likelihood is equal to the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi times log of p plus, now we're going to have 1 minus xi times log of 1 minus p. And just to be absolutely careful here, we're ensuring that we're summing over each of these terms in, in order. Okay, can we simplify this any further? Well, we can because essentially the log of p is just a constant, so we can take it outside of the sum, so we're just going to get log of p times the sum of xi from i equals 1 to n, plus now we're going to have log of 1 minus p times the sum from i equals 1 to n of 1 minus xi. Okay, so we've simplified this thing quite a lot. We can simplify it a little bit further if we note that the sum of xi from i equals 1 to n is just going to be n times the mean. And to remember to see that, all we need to do is we need to just write that x bar is equal to 1 over n times the sum, and then we just multiply through by the n. So this whole expression here is just going to become x bar. Similarly, 1 minus xi, or the sum of 1 minus xi, is just going to become n times 1 minus x bar. So we've completely removed the summation convention from our log likelihood. And we're going to continue to talk about this log likelihood, and we're going to finish off deriving our maximum likelihood estimator of the fraction of individuals which are male in the population in the next video. I'll see you then.